our members of the university community, our guests, we wish to welcome all of us to this inaugural lecture to be presented by Professor Williams. Odozo. Obiozo. Obiozo. Odozo is very. <laughs> thank you. So we thank God for this beautiful day. And we wish to welcome all of us to this special academic program. Uh, we are good to go. Any moment from now, the procession will come in. Yes. So please, the DJ should give us a procession sound. Procession sound. And may I inform us that as soon as the procession is in, we are all going to rise to welcome the procession. Meanwhile, we welcome an internal member of the governing council of our great university, Professor Misha. We welcome you, sir. We welcome you. I'll be Please may we rise for the procession. We shall recognize all of us at the appropriate time. So we welcome you. We welcome the procession. We welcome you. Thank you. This is a solemn academic assembly. So we welcome our DAP, who is officially recognizing the vice chancellor, uh, representing the vice chancellor, Professor Angela Ufele. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Please, may we be seated? May we be seated, please? Thank you. Mr. Vice Chancellor, ably represented by the Director of Academic Planning of our great university, Distinguished members of the university management here present, members of the university governing council here present, members of the lecture committee, we welcome you. I just want to do a little introduction before we can commence, so that once we comment, we won't get into introductions again. So I've welcomed Professor Misha Kweke. I salute you, member, governing council. Please let us appreciate him. Thank you, sir. I can also see the dean of the Faculty of Arts. He's here with us, Professor Avaniko Kumamara. We salute you. The former resident electoral commissioner, Imo State, is also here. Our own dear Professor Emeka Ezono. We salute you. Uh, we can also see and recognize the presence of uh, the former provost, Federal College of Education, Technical Omunze, Professor 
Josepha Tobuago, we salute you. We welcome you. And the man that gave a very wonderful inaugural, uh, not, not inaugural, um, the, the Jubilee Lecturer is also here, Professor Brian Adima. Yes, we salute you. We also have in our midst Professor A.U. Nonyelo, the Director of Emeka Nyoko Institute for International Affairs. We salute you, sir. So may we welcome all our directors that are here. We welcome you. We will commence. We will still do the normal introduction. Um, permit me also to welcome our uh, upper new chassis, newly made, Professor Okafor Jerome. We welcome you. We welcome you. We will take other recognitions, please, as we continue. We welcome you again and again. And may I also inform us that this is a hybrid uh, activity. That is to say that we have international audience and other, you know, participants, online participants, them, and welcome all of us. Please may we write for the university song. Thank you. Please may we invite the director of Sandwich Program, Professor Okoli, to please come forward for the opening prayer. Thank you. In the name of the Father. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity you've given us today to witness another inaugural lecture. We thank you for the life, for the opportunity, and for everything your mercy is in, your li in our life. May all glory and honor be yours in Jesus' name. O oh Lord, we commit today's activity into your hand. We pray that you send your guiding angels we pray that you be with us, that all we are going to be, all that you are going to do will be to thy own glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, dear Prof. Thank you. Thank you. Please may we be seated. Our dear Vice Chancellor and Chairman, ably represented today by Professor Angela Ufele, the Director of Academic Planning of our great university. We welcome you. Dear distinguished scholars, guests, ladies, and gentlemen, it is my singular honor to welcome, in a special way, the 97th inaugural lecturer who will be talking to us today in a special way. 
He is Professor Williams Emeka Obiozo. So please, may we appreciate him as he moves to his table. And he's coming up. No, no, now you don't need to. Uh -huh. You don't need to rush. You don't need to rush. Uh -huh. So, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, with him is his beautiful wife, Doctor Mrs. Obi Williams. Obi please may we appreciate them. Thank you. You can now move smilingly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please may we put our hands together for them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yellow and uh, black complexion. Anyway, <laughs> well balanced. So we welcome you. Please let us appreciate them again. Because today is their day. We salute you. Congratulations in advance. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I'm the chairman, ably represented by the DAP, their distinguished professors, guests, ladies, and gentlemen. May I respectfully invite the Vice Chancellor of our great university, Professor Charles Sokechuku Esmone, fellow Academy of Science, ably represented today by Professor Angela Ufele, the Director of Academic Planning of our great university, to please come forward to deliver the Vice Chancellor's remarks or address, and at the same time, declare the 97th inaugural lecture open. Mr. Vice Chancellor. Good afternoon, distinguished professors, the directors, our visitors, and everybody here present. On behalf of our Vice Chancellor, Professor Charles Okechuku Esimone, I am here to welcome all of you. You are highly welcome to Nandazi Kiwa University, the University of the Moment. It is indeed a great occasion to inaugurate a professor. It is not easy to be a professor. At least, to be a professor, you must have been a lecturer in a university for 13 good years. So it's not an easy thing. May we clap for the 97th inaugural lecturer. The 97th inaugural lecture, lecturer is Professor Williams Emeka Obiozo a professor of adult learning and the special education. You see, invariably we are all adults and he majored in adult education. So he is going to talk about all of us. Please put your hands together for him again. You are all welcome. On behalf of the Vice Chancellor, Professor Charles Okechuku Esimone, FAS, I declare this 97th inaugural lecture open. Please, another round of applause for the Vice Chancellor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Distinguished scholars, ladies and gentlemen, we want to take the major tax of today now. And uh, we want to 
introduce the masquerade, the great academic masquerade that will be displaying today all his intellectual, you know, capitals. And I wish to invite, with due respect, the person that will present the citation of the 97th inaugural lecturer, Professor Williams Obiozo, is going to be presented by no other person, by SAVC on Communication, Information, and Protocol, Dr. Ima Ojuku. Citation of Professor Williams Emeka Obiozo. Williams Emeka Obiozo is a professor of adult learning and special education, a United States Congressional Youth Leadership award winner in 2006, community development activist, career mentor, and founding editor-in-chief of the African Journal of Teacher Education, Ajote, the International Journal of Education, Science and Public Policy in Africa, among others. The two international journals were instrumental to the international publication of some lecturers of Nandia Zikiwe University and other institutions since his return to Nigeria. Obiozo graduated from St. Teresa's College, Nsuka, attended the University of Nigeria in the field of adult education and extramural studies. He also obtained his Master's of Education, MED, in 1991 from the same university before leaving Nigeria for the Republic of the Gambia, where he worked as a news reporter and entertainment writer. In the year 2000, he relocated to the United States of America. Obiozo is widely traveled and spent five years as a public school teacher in the Maryland public school system, where he taught junior and senior high school students before moving to tertiary institutions in America. He was formerly an assistant professor of special education at the Bluesburg University of Pennsylvania. He's also an alumnus of the prestigious University of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, at Wilmington University, Georgetown Campus, Delaware. He was a former assistant director, Frederick Douglass Institute of Academic Excellence at Bluesburg University former Deputy Director, International Leakages and Collaboratory Programs at the Nandia Zikiwe University, among other positions held in the university. Obiozo has attracted many innovative programs and projects in the university, and he is presently the Director, Center for Disability and Special Needs Research, Sandasna, whose office attracted over 100,000 US dollars grant from the Africa Export Import Bank, Cairo, Egypt, in 2001, 2021. The most recent accomplishment 
a professor. Obiaza is the winning of gold award for UNISIC from the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board, JAMB in Abuja, as the best and number one institution in Nigeria which provides equity and opportunity to persons with disabilities to access higher education. <laughs> Among other accomplishments, is also the producer of One Street Radio. Radio show, a syndicated community radio program in selected radio stations in Oka, Anambra State, Nigeria. He is married to an international financial analyst and hospitality management consultant, Dr. Obi Williams Obiozo, and they are blessed with four children. <laughs> Distinguished colleagues, this is Professor Williams Emeko Biozo, the 97th inaugural lecturer for today. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, distinguished scholars. Now we day here. Please, uh, if uh, you can give me this uh, permission, I would like us to observe. One minute silence for my parents. <laughs> Please stand up. I want to observe one minute silence. For my parents, they are all diseased, but these are people, the couple that made me who I am today. May the soul of Raymond and Martha Obioso rest in perfect peace and the soul of all those departed, in Jesus' name. You should pardon me, because I am overwhelmed with joy. Mixed feelings, quite all right, but these things happen. You know, it's like I went back the memory lane to remember a few things. My father said to me, you have a golden opportunity to become who you want to be. This was when I failed common entrance. If you know about common entrance examination. Other parents were changing schools for their children to continue to private school. My father said, no, you are going to repeat primary six. And after this, you will learn. A lot of people laughed at me, my colleagues at that time. But look at me today. Thank you. Just maybe five minutes for my story, and then we'll do the lecture. If time permits, I can go back. But I, I started like any other young person. Although I didn't go to school without a a footwear, and like uh, the other man. <laughs> uh, yes, I was wearing something. I used to wear sandals. Cortina of those days. 
My other friend didn't wear anything, but he became president. I wore cotton and I became uh, professor. Yes, so it has not been an easy thing, but after I failed that common entrance, I repeated. And from there, I got admitted at the St. Teresa's College. Oh, no, 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 so we were putting and I will go on professor already. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, through secondary school, from secondary school to university, I took jam. I applied for law. I had 228, I still remember till today. 228, I was asked to wait for either a child, a staff child quota or supplementary quota. I told my parents no. I still remember that I failed common entrance. I won't take jambe again. No. Put me anywhere. Let me get into anywhere. They said there is opening in adult education. I said, let me go there. As at that time, adult education used to be the program for the real adults. Retire principals, teachers, local government workers. They were people who were learning those skills, those uh, training uh, programs as at that time. So I was, I was termed the young adult because I was the youngest in the class. Then the plan was after one year, they would change, I would change to law. Maybe by then I must have scored a very good grade. But it happened to be that by the time I finished that year one as adult education student, I said, no, I'm not going to change. I like this course. I want to do this program. And this program really changed me in different ways. So as I moved up the ladder after college, university education, I came out. You know, this job thing, there was no job too. I found myself in Lagos with uh, one of my colleagues, my former roommate. We started struggling. No job. Every morning we walk up to Broad Street, up and down, entering from one office to the other. Eventually, I used to have a very good roommate. Should I even call him roommate? But good friend, classmate. And I'm happy he's here today. Dr. Osita Niemeka. Please, is he here? Osita Niemeka. Get here. Aha. Uh -huh. This man here is older, yes, but very close friend. This is the man who taught me so many things about life, about life. I remember those days I will come to his hostel, his own hostel, to stay for the night. And then he will ask me, where is your toothpaste? Where is your toothbrush? Where is your towel? Because you need to have that whenever you're stepping out of your home to someone's place. You don't go to someone's house and use their, to their, their, their towels and stuff like that. These are just part of it. That as a young man, you, used, you must be using deodorants. Some of our students don't know that. That's when some enter your class. You are my witnesses. You, you perceive what you never thought. But I started learning this. And I met him in Lagos again, after we all left school. And you won't believe it, ladies and gentlemen, the first job I got in the media was through him. Started working together again. He became my boss. He became my boss. I never learned anything about writing. It was this man that taught me how to write. You, you have seen some of my works out there. That's just a tip of the iceberg. But I learned all this. From there, my story changed because, yes, okay, my wife is here, but let me tell you this story, yes. The girl I would have married. Uh -huh. Yes. This young girl, we, for six years that she was in medical school, I was with her as a student. 
But eventually, when it was time, we all left school and all that, and someone came from America to marry her. And you know, ladies, what they do for me. So I said, tell your parents that you have been dating someone for six years. You're very soon, he will get a job, and you can marry. <laughs> Here is my own engagement ring. She said, I better keep the ring first. Let me go and see the American guy first. After that, I will decide. I said, if you step out of this house, forget about it. She, she thought I was joking, so she left. And I, eventually, two weeks later, she came back. She wants to know if I will stay marry her. What happened to the American man? He is 22 years older than myself. She was 22 then. So you can imagine that. I told her to stay away from me. And that America, I will go there. This was how my journey, American journey started. So, well, the rest is in my book. If you have my book, my lecture book, my story has everything. So that's by the way. Now I found myself in America, courtesy of Professor Buba Misawa from Adamawa State. The only Hausa man I know in America that is a lecturer, and he's still there. In, the, in 1999, Obasanjo appointed him deputy security advisor. He turned it down and preferred to lecture. So that inspired me to some extent. But is a someone that met me in the course of me writing articles and papers and so on. And then he said, go to university, come to America. You will excel with what you know. And that's how I found myself going to University of Pittsburgh. But before then, the advice he gave me, and I'm giving this advice to the young ones that are here. If you are jackpotting out of the country, if you find yourself going out of the country, think of something that can make you relevant to study. Gone are the days when we just study anything, even now in Nigeria. This, this, this same Hausa guy that said to me, if you want to, if you want to excel in life, think of something that is from the ordinary. I started looking for something that is in the ordinary in America. And that's when I learned about special education, learned about disabilities, found out that even in the primary, secondary universities, they need those programs. And that was how I left the program I was doing and enrolled for special education. And here am I today, coming back home to give back and sharing those things I know about special education. So I taught special education for five years in the high school and then the university gather some experience and contacts. And one day, my elder sister, Dr. Mrs. Koledoye here, called me and said, uh, Chi, there is somebody that is coming to Baltimore City. I know you are in Baltimore. Please go and meet up his name. Meet, meet up with him. Take him around. Do whatever you can do to make him comfortable. And I said, who is that? He said his name is Oke okay, Chuku Esimone. This was how I met, this should be around 2006, 2005, thereabout. I met him, you know, and he said, you should come back to Nigeria. We are all trying to see what we can do. I said, is this the same Nigeria that I read in the news? So, but eventually, I started thinking about coming back home to give back, you know? After I did special education and graduated, I paid $1,000 to apply for work, work permit. America returned the $1,000 to me and gave me work permit free, you know, because of special education. That will tell you how important it is to their society. 
So, but the rest is story, a lot of story. So, let me just leave it at this point. And uh, if we can go to what we are here for the other part of the lecture. The topic for discussion is the paradigm shift in promoting adult learning, inclusion needs of persons with disabilities, PWDs, in a work and learning environment. I hope you don't mind uh, when I teach, because I'm the teacher today. I'm teaching all of you. Very happy about that. So I'll be moving around like we teachers do. It's something that I have seen that is very, very important. To start with, when we talk about disabilities, in my center here, the Center for Disability and Special Needs Research, we say that there is ability in disability. Yes, every person with disability also have one form of ability that's given to the person by the God Almighty. Uh, but let's look at the, the concepts here because uh, we are mixing the two. We are talking about adult learning and we also we are talking about special needs education. As an adult educator, we have different parameters which we consider adults when we talk about an adult. I know if I ask anyone here now, what is an adult? What do we mean by an adult? Who is an adult? The first person, the first thing you will hear is somebody that is 18 years and uh, above. Somebody that can be that can be voted for, or that can vote, or even go to jail. Yes, 18 years and above. But in our field, we look at adult in different ways. It could be it could be a physiological way, biological way, physical way. It could come in different ways. Let me give you an example. You see these young people. Go to granite, buy granite, orange. And in this part of the world, we, we may call it child labor. Huh? We are using this child to make money. But this child has the brain that the adult has. If you check very well, you find out that if you buy that granite or orange, and it is 50-50 naira. And when you give that child 30 naira, what will happen? The child will say, no, my money is 50 naira. You still owe me 20. They are very smart to know that. That is a very good example. And these young people, these young kids go home. They are, some of them are actually the ones who bring money for the family. And so on and so forth. Is it not a role adults should play that they are playing? One more thing, just check out some communities. I don't know about your community, but not in mine. 12 years, 11 years, 13 years, get married and have children. And now they look me like that, they like. Is it not true? In some places. But don't check this out. They have kids. Don't they? And still breastfeed and play the roles. Our mothers who are who must have been older play. And that is that is what else are we looking for if we want to characterize an adult? They are playing the same role. So and okay. And when you and when you look at that, who did this one now? Frank, I just want uh -huh, I just wanted like this better. So, so these young people now, at a point in their life, they might want to go back to school. Maybe they dropped out and so on. Maybe they didn't even attend at all. But they are now older. They want to learn. They want to acquire knowledge, skills, and other things. And when they get themselves in an environment or in an institution or a setup or a center that provides those services that can get them to acquire knowledge and skills and be able to be functional in the society and do those things they're expected to do. That's when we talk about adult education. 
programs we design for people like this, they must have missed out one way or the other. That's why today we have CEP program. That is today, that's why we have sandwich program. Most of the people who are in this program never planned to be in that program, but maybe by accident or somewhere along the line, something happened in their life and they found themselves here having grown up. So in the process again, as they do this, is learn those things, learn all the things about life and so on and so forth, they become adult learners. That is why you are seeing the adult learner there. And when at the end of the day, they started practicing some of these things, using that experience, being self-directed, and setting their goals in life and achieving them. They are practicing part of what we call the adult learning theory propounded by Malcolm Noyes, which is the theory also, theory of andragogy. Andragogy has to do with the art and science of helping adults to learn, in contrast to pedagogy that most of us must have been hearing about, which is the art and science of teaching children. What does disability look like to you? This is a question we can all ask ourselves. Disability can be, can be in form of a physical, mental, cognitive, or sensory impairments. That is why you can see people who may not see, who cannot see, or can see partially, and that's why we call them visually impaired. And that is why we can see people who cannot hear very well or cannot even hear at all. That's the hearing impairment. Those who cannot read, those who cannot write very well, and so on and so forth, and they require some form of assistance to be able to do that. Those who may have emotional and behavioral disorder. Some of us may even have that without knowing. You come into the class, and maybe someone is trying, excuse me, sir, or excuse me, my, I, what you, you taught us the other day. I don't want to hear anything from anybody. I don't, you walk out, and you start getting irritated, start challenging, start harassing. Sometimes it can be an emotional issue. Actually, in most institutions out there in America, there are certain behaviors that the students will notice and they can make recommendations and you will go for psychological testing or you can go for a emotional and a behavioral test to ascertain whether there is any form of disability that can require giving support. Attention hyperactivity disorder. You see in our school system, especially the, the public schools, these are kids who have attention issues. But there are ways you can handle that as a special education teacher. All these people are categorized into disabilities. Not to talk of those who have communication challenges, cannot speak, cannot look you in the eyes, cannot interact with you or in any way or the other. These are the autism, cerebral palsy. Talking about Down syndrome, talking about mentally challenged and so on. They come in different ways. But that doesn't mean we should reject them in the society at all, no. Because we know that each of them have different conditions that affect individuals in different ways, you know? So disabilities are either congenital which means they occur before or during birth, or acquired, it could be after birth. What do people with disability want? The same things we all need. People with disability require good houses, good homes. They require that when they walk in here, they will be able to come in, which means there is a, a modification of the building, which means you can have a ramp here that they can go in with their wheelchair, which means there are rails here they can hold if they 
uh, uh, partially sighted or visually impaired or working with their canes. Some of these things, having a disability-friendly toilet, environment, parking lots that has that disability support. These are some of the things they want. They want to also do something meaningful in their life. They want to have a job. They want to do something for themselves so that tomorrow they can cater for themselves and not begging for arms, begging for help. You know? Of course, they want to also have friendships, relationships, just like us all. They also would require to take some decisions for themselves. It's not because one is physically challenged that it means that the person cannot reason properly or take up a, a, a challenge for himself or herself. Those who make decisions for in most cases are those who have uh, mentally challenged issues. And that is part of what it's all about. The paradigm shift. In modern day society, we are no longer talking about hey, this person has disability. This person had. What we are looking at now are the things that can create opportunities for them to be better people. Change in the way we see them, the way we look at them, the way we talk at them, talk to them. These are some of the things we have to look at when we are talking ab about the paradigm shift. A way that moves away from the medical challenges or medical issues, and now we are looking at the social responsibility and emphasizing the need for inclusion, including them in whatever we are doing, making them part and parcel of the society, making their life exciting. A very good example, Dr. Bibian. Okoli. Is she here? Yes. Can you please stand? Please clap for her. She has a PhD. She has, I think she's the first that has visual impairment. Yes, blind, but she has a PhD. All the way from Asaba for this program. Please sit. You're welcome. Because she wanted to come initially and I was like, how are we going to do this? I've called a few people. Please, I need somebody coming. Can you be like a guide and so on? And the person will give her excuse. I called the, the person who gave her excuse. I said, okay. She said she's going to come here to this event, no matter what. And here she is. And of course, one of my students, Lovett, please stand. This young lady volunteered that wherever she's going, whatever she's doing today in Oka, she will help her to move around. These are the kind of things we are talking about. Include them in the things we do. And let's make the society a better place. Now, when we are talking about the paradigm shift, the new paradigm shift aims to challenge traditional notions of disability. Instead, we are talking about promoting inclusive and empowering opportunities for them. In those days, in our communities, you find them talking about onion and way disability. So no, adjun more. Two of us. In some places, they they attribute it to some spiritual whatever. And instead of finding better ways to train the, the child and create opportunities for them, some will go and lock them up somewhere. I would want them to see the, the light of the day. I have witnessed that. I was once invited to come to Anisha to meet a child. They don't know exactly what is wrong with him, but for three years he has been locked in one place. And I went there only to find out that the child has autism. And we had to start developing something that we can use to train the child. If you see that, that uh, individual today, it's a, it's a lot different. And that's part of what we are talking about, the paradigm shift. Let us shift away from the traditional notions that we have about disability and start getting them to the right place. There are uh, some of the components when we talk about 
the paradigm shift. In the first place that we have to continue research. There should be more scientific research to all the goals and concerns of individuals with disability. And that is part of the reasons why we have the Center for Disability and Special Needs Research. We are looking at opportunities and things that can make them better students. In the UNIZIC here, we, start, we started with 11 students, identifying 11 students with disability. About half of them were in the law program. But today we are up to 85 students from 2019 to here. So you can imagine what could have been the fate of these young people if Sendasna was not introduced to the university. Full access to education is part of the paradigm shift we want to have now. We want them to start embracing education and going to school and making life better for themselves. Inclusive education, giving them equal opportunity like we give other people creating opportunities for diversity, giving employment. We have, in, in Sendasna here, we have about uh, five to six uh, staff who are visually impaired, working with us, attending to other students who have visual impairment. But it's unfortunate, very, very unfortunate. Could you believe that for the past three years these people have been working, they have never been paid. And they have families. And we are calling I peace, I peace, I peace. Is this the way we will, give, we will move into the paradigm shift? No. So we, we want to start looking at employers being influenced that they need to employ them, give them jobs, give them opportunities to excel. We want to make sure that there is no form of social stigma. No, we don't need that when we are talking about the paradigm shift. Now, when we have an inclusive classroom, it makes life easier and better. Building relationships with people with disabilities help to create better opportunities for them to learn and improve in the activities they do. Depending on the level they are, you can provide different activities that can give them opportunities to learn and learn better. Create opportunities for collaborative learning. You mix them up in the class. Lecturers, are, you are the ones I'm talking to about this. You mix them up in the class. If you have two or three blind students in your classroom, Move them around, have different people, different assignments given to each and every one of them, and pair them up with others who don't have that disability. They, and they will be learning from each other because they also have their own experience. Allow support and allow mistakes. We all make mistakes. And people with disability also are bound to also make mistakes like us. So we should be tolerant when we talk about that. In the workplace, we have to create an inclusive workplace. I mentioned earlier, having um, disability-friendly classrooms, ventilation, a nice sitting arrangement so that they can navigate the place, disability-friendly toilets and restrooms, and so on and so forth. These are some of the things that are needed. If they need computers to work, which is obvious in some instances, let them have that and you see they work better. You don't give them certain uh, tasks to do when you know that they can sit uh, on the table, on their, in their chair on the table and be able to use computer and do some administrative tasks and do it very well. They can do uh, registering of mails and so on in the office. They can also be secretaries. So these are some of the things we need to consider in the workplace. Now, the Sendasna example. I mentioned Sendasna before. It's something we started in 2019. And uh, in 2019, when the new vice chancellor came in, he reminded me of our discussions years back in, in Baltimore City on how to 
make things work. He never knew he would be a VC by then, but I know he has the ambition, like every one of us, you know, to be somebody tomorrow. So eventually we started working on that, came up with a proposal, identified the students we have, and then our vision is to, you know, to create a more inclusive community. And from all indications, it's gradually happening. That inclusive community is happening now. And this morning, I received a female that was posted to my, that they have just posted her to my office, um, visually impaired. She's coming to work with us. I said, yes, we'll, we'll engage her. And it's part of the inclusive nature that we are talking about, bringing people from different communities together. We want to act as a bridge between the, the university community and the disability community. It's very, very important. We engage in training. We create opportunities for integration. We have innovative and supportive services that we provide in Sendasna. We look at life skills and self-determination programs. That is why today we have uh, uh, commissioned or inaugurated a skill acquisition and entrepreneurship building uh, project so that these students will now begin to learn a skill, acquire something before they leave school. At the end of the day, if there is no government job, they can do something on their own. But you find out that when you invite people in the public, all the Omoka chase and the Omoko uh, Nyaibo people on the road, they will not come. But they will be fast to run to the church and make donations so that Father will announce their name among the congregation, everybody at Koleaka. We need to begin to shift from this our traditional attitude and support disability. It is very, very important. We have a student trust fund in our center. Um, last year, we received $10,000 from Afrezim Bank, African Export Import Bank. $10,000. And we, we started using these funds. That time last year, uh, December 7th, last year, over 77 students received 50,000 Naira each as bursary allowance from the center. Peter B will tell you to go and verify. Go and verify. My students, are you there? Okay. Uh, and I mean, so, so this year, of course, stay from that funding. Even from that money, we are also using it to put in our building. But after today's event, every student will get ten thousand ten thousand naira, not dollars, because ten thousand naira, <laughs> ten thousand naira each as their Christmas uh, bursary. I think it's better. <laughs> Okay, so how do we work with adults with disabilities? We do that through special education. We also do that through advocacy. Nothing that we can do for these people is too small. It is, the more you work to support them, the more you do things to bless them, the more you get blessings. I am a living witness. I am a living witness. Since I volunteered myself, my life and everything, to work for these students with disability. It, it has been a very interesting story that I've been having. I'm serious. Sometimes I get calls at midnight. You can't stop them. And they have an issue. You have to address it. Someone is about to be pushed out of her hostel because has not paid rent. And they, have, they need only 20,000 or 10,000 to complete it. We come in and support them. School fees, the same thing. Uh, early this year, we sent, we paid 100,000 for a law student who is going to law school that doesn't have money to go to law school, but has paid everything but couldn't get. Our center has to raise 100,000 and give to the student, and he moved. Today, he's, he's a lawyer in the making. Any moment from now. So we should start advocating 
we should start looking at special things that can help them to be, you know, the way we want them to be. The federal government has disability laws. That reminds me, in UNIZIC here too, we developed a disability policy, disability rights policy. Many of you must not have heard about it yet, but we are coming up with that document that will be shared to all the faculties and deans and directors of centers so that we start getting the information better than we are. Because I know this disability and special education thing is quite new to some of us. But I know with time we're going to learn more from that. HI Quacky Quacker, no problem. Yeah. Even we as lecturers, we still have challenges. Adult educators have challenges in working with students with disability. Una they here are my students, but many of you are very difficult to work with. But I'm doing my best, no be so. If we were we But the good thing is that we are creating a better atmosphere, environment for them. Is this not better than staying home, idle, begging for arms? But now they are learning, getting education, getting skills, eventually graduate, get a job, get something doing, have their own family. That is the story behind all this. Yes, there are challenges. It could be as a matter of uh, time. You need to be mindful of the time, mindful of the times, you know, the time constraints. It takes time. Those, those of you that are teaching them, you will understand what I'm saying. But you have to be patient. You have to be patient while working with them. They have different and diverse learning needs. And when we talk about learning, of course, we have the, those who are visual learners, those who are auditory learners, and uh, those who also could practice uh, among themselves and use their hands to do things. Uh, and that is why here we are still requesting and pleading with people that if we can get laptops for our students, that would be wonderful. Every student getting a laptop, it will go a long way, especially for the visually impaired to take lectures, even to write exams. It goes a long way to help them. It's important that we engage our learners. What about in, in our Nigerian environment? What are the challenges? Government policies, very, very important. The, the uh, National Assembly members, they are buying brand new jeeps for themselves, but, you, but they cannot create opportunities for students with disabilities to even go to school free of charge. They cannot do that, but they are buying jeeps, they are doing this, creating money and wealth for themselves. These are some of the issues that we have to challenge when we talk about paradigm shift. Professor Ezenwa, don't worry, I'm almost done. Uh, don't worry, I'm almost done. I timed this. Uh, so some of the challenges of which we have to take into consideration and keep putting into practice is for us to, you know, apply human rights. Human rights. Every student desires to have his or her rights uh, respected, just like every human being. I'm, I'm glad the university lawyer is here. Mm. That, that right is important. It's enshrined in our constitution. So we should be able to have that opportunity, provide accommodations, attend to all the things that can help them be able to create also a legacy for themselves. Let us start to try to provide opportunities that can transform access to science and technology. These are the areas we are now trying to encourage our students to start applying for. And we, we have seen that we have to start from the secondary school because we find out that most of our students with disabilities, only very few have interest in science. But I believe with time, we will do that. Men can nail it down.
Thank you. All right. So some of the things we are going to do. Let us provide ramps. Disability toilets, brails. We need to provide that if we can afford that. It's a very expensive. But, you know, we are getting there. Disability-friendly software. We have all these things available. Our parking lots have to have a designation for those with disabilities that where they can park. If you go to the VC's uh, office, the whole parking lot is filled up with cars. Someone with disability comes, they won't know where to park. And it becomes a problem getting to the place. The same issues we are going to address. But the good thing is that the university, uh, when we come to talking about uh, providing accommodations, the VC has made it compulsory now that any new building that is coming up in the university must have a ramp that people can, you know, get through. I think that is a great thing. Um, lifts, it's not bad if we have lifts here in some of the buildings, so that those with wheelchairs can also be able to get in. Side canes, we thank Afrezim Bank for providing us with a lot of them. We've been giving out some crutches too. Of course, uh, another area we are trying to engage ourselves in as from next year, is on hearing impairment. And that is why we have our young man here, Mr. Daniel, here today. We are unveiling him. He's a lecturer in educational foundations. So any, from today onwards, if the university is having an event, he will be here to do this because we do invite uh, people with hearing impairment to enjoy what we are also enjoying. Biko Okolo Niaka. That's how they do it. Uh -huh. It's like this. It's like this. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Conclusion. Many people will give a sigh of relief. They had disability, a disability. It'll be also a nice Okay, you see, when we talk about the paradigm shift on the issues concerning adult learning, disabilities, special needs, education, and all that, we are always guided by the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And that Sustainable Development Goals look at these areas as very, very essential when we consider people with disabilities. One is the education, which UNISIC is doing now, providing access to education. And that is why we scored the first, the best from the nationwide evaluation JAMP did. Namde Azikiwe University got the first position as the first institution that provides access to education to people with disability. clap offering. Well, I Okay, so growth and employment, very, very important. We want to give them jobs in this university. And those that have been given jobs have to be paid. Okwanya? Yes. So, unu nyeruma akaka ayo wandi no nisi? Especially in the Nocha Nirueba. Front. We don't want inequality in UNISIC. We want a situation whereby everyone will be given fair treatment. Whether disability or no disability. It is part of the United Nations goal. Safe and inclusive human settlements. We want them to live in a hostel that is affordable and uh, usable 
and be able to assess the facilities there without uh, much problem. There is need for us to begin data collection, which we are doing now, trying to know the number of people with disabilities within the university setting and beyond. And of course, the more we do that, the more it gives us opportunity to create programs that will get onto them. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, on this day, I, Williams, Emeko Biozo, cordially invite, urge and implore you, distinguished guests, scholars, students, ladies and gentlemen, let us join Sendasna Unisic. Let us support our students with disability. Whenever, anywhere, anywhere you see people with disabilities, don't pity them. It's not about pity. We are talking about support, assist. If they need to cross the road and you know that they need to cross the road, help them cross the road. Okay? If they are carrying their bags, you don't want to go and carry their bags for them. You think they can carry their bags. But show them the way if they need that help. In the classrooms, some of them, uh, during exams, we, we usually have our uh, staff go in there because we don't have all the facilities, the technological facilities that we need. So we have to send our workers to go in and read the questions for them, and they can provide answers. And then we'll get them recorded and submit. These are part of what we are doing to make sure that they write exams, like other students, right there in the hall. You know, so we need to all get together and uh, do the needful for our students. And uh, on this note, I thank you for listening. Okay. I'm a member of the BDB. That's in my appreciation. Yes, I have that in mind. I want to start with thanking God Almighty for the vision, for the strength. When I woke up this morning, I don't know if this happens to anyone, but sometimes when you if you're traveling, that's that, that morning, that's the day the sleep will want to really disturb you. I don't know if it happens to anyone. When did that day you want to travel and you should wake up early? And that was what happened to the Nsiekwen Soman Lerogi. Can I send the village? And send the village, my baby, and there's one mother. What is her name? So I got up, dressed up, got on my way. I saw a staff that lives around. I gave her a ride. But while giving her a ride, in my heart I was angry. I said, This one who go on now, whoever can name we now. <laughs> but I had to give her a ride. But along the line, say I can water for her. Can I water the for her? Notice her now, flat tire. Say, Madam, I said, Please, can you just go and take vehicles? Say, I have to do this. It's okay. So, Ndiakwelo Bataya, phone mana ring here and there. I said I will overcome. Oka me me go overcome today. I did go on record and me me go in my book. And then ling we do gezu, ma kona eche bu muche since. Oka ke we for tutuku se mi, and ling we do gezu everybody. Uh -huh. So, I thank God for that. I thank my family. The Obiozo family of Enuguku, please, can you stand wherever you are? Obiozo Nguibo, family. Pull out on his own, Yes. If you know... From Unif this is a couple, my, my in-law, Dr. Femi Koledoye, my sister, Uzamaka, Ada Koledoye. Uh, you can sit down, eh? My, my sister-in-law, Elizabeth. Obiozo. My sister-in-law again, Uche Ubiozo, and my younger sister, 
Mata, Chemoba. These are my pillar of strength. And of course, my lovely wife here. Nemona Muka. So they have been very wonderful. I don't know where I would have been without these people. So I thank them for that support all the way from University of Nigeria and Suka. Uh, my children are out there. Mamafa, she flew in yesterday to Lagos and then flew in this morning and flying again tomorrow. Yes. Dr. Osita Anyemeka is here. He's my mentor, my friend. He's the president of Sub-Saharan Open University. They operate in Uganda, Kampala campus, and a couple of other places in West Africa. Um, Osita has been there for many years now. You know, he's from Onichubo, he's from the royal family. You can see his robes. Thank you, sir, for coming all the way from Abuja. Professor Ima Onyoziri, Biko Kuloto Kafuge, all the way from the United States of America, <laughs> University of Maryland, Eastern Shores. He told me he would be here. He was, when I was deputy director for international collaboration and linkages, I brought him here to work for sociology department as a Carnegie fellow, yes. He did, he helped the sociology department to set up the criminology program. I don't know if they have taken off or not, but uh, he has always been someone that mentors me too. Professor Romeo Koye, Omukolu, he's retired, but he's uh, not tired. Yes. So Romeo, we play tennis together, what do I for there? So anytime money I got that tennis, if he's in a jail or mukolu, you bag it up. My corner bomb every time. You know. We thank you for coming. Uh, Professor Jerome Ocavo. He was the first person, if I'm not mistaken, that did inaugural lecture. Please stand in the faculty of education. Yes. And he's from Enuguku, my hometown. So the day he was doing that, I said to myself, this was like 2011 or 2012. 2011, I was still new from America. I said, I go do this thing this man did. Though. If you know me, I'm a very ambitious person. So, and I like to do things out of the ordinary. Uh, the OC Foundation, OCI Foundation, stand up. OCI Foundation, these are my team, uh, Dr. Chris Ifediora Foundation. Dr. Chris Ifediora is based in Australia, but well, he has this foundation that helps to create awareness about uh, cervical cancer and all that. You can see it, please. I joined this foundation and I brought them to this university for the first time, and they have been doing so much across Nigeria because my mother died of that cancer. And I've been working with them since we've actually done a research that is published and in, in different international journals on cervical cancer and so on. So I welcome you. Hi, and then Professor Osita is the patron of Enugu Community Development Union, Oka Branch. He's another person. He's retired from Abia State University. I also attended his inaugural lecture. That day, he was the one that inspired me to bring out some books. I hope no go to check out book. Because that day of his inaugural lecture, I took a book to see Joe Benin. Obori for the Naro Devenkem. Professor Goy Beneme. Yes, when I was about coming here to this university it was one of those that uh, Professor Simone introduced to guide me. 
to mentor me. You know, and uh, he has always been that. He's soft spoken. Oh, we go try guagi fe. Man, oh, we go era moto yesi guagi. Oh, ga guagi ko ari guagi. Uji style no. Uji dego digi naka. I say, give me five email. Come, come, come. You know, equal. Obi, you have always been Professor Obi Okonkwo. Oh, my main person. Hey, man, who no money? Powerful dancer. I say, my Obi, I hear I'm a Ford Wing Potan de Gueba. A pota, a pota. How we put no one our problem? So, and so that day, I'm just one hour. So let me do that. Professor A, you know you are not one of those guys. You not talk about it. All the time, I'm cannot on my toes. Now this university, I'm going to get to the Rotary Club. I'm going to get to the Rotary Club. You remember, I came with my wife that time. Major me in doctor. I'm going to get to the Rotary Club. I'm going to get to the Rotary Club. Professor Joseph Fatu Wago. Yes. Former Provost, Federal College of uh, Education, Technical Umunze. He, he made me to know how to be a consultant. Because when he was there, he always gave me contract. Come and train this. Come and write this. Come and develop this. And we were doing it. Yes, with... Uh, Professor Obidiego, yes, UJ Obidiego, I am never. Hey, I'm Papa. People are rich here. Hey, Professor Mekazon, Mona, Professor Iluchi Okafo, Pagi Den Katoge in America. Now chat, now chat. I'm not a man from Nigeria, from America. I'm not a common guy, Iluchi Okafo. I'm not a man. I ain't chat on the same event. Obiadolom na kasin. This is the man you have been talking with. He introduced me to that wonderful man. And uh, he himself has been part and parcel of my mentorship here. You know, and I thank you very well. My new and greatest Onyonya uh, Meche inaugural lecture, Professor Avan. Is the music oracle? Uh, is the music oracle? Uh, I hope you are good. So, Amara Zimu. Because I I I thank everybody. Because ndi na alo na sendas na kulgolo toka phone. Ndi na alo na sendas na. Mwa ine diju cha fe fro. Ah ne na. Okay nda ndi moke. Ah you can see. Thank you. If I keep uh, there are so many people here. Please I may not call everybody's name, but you are all very special. Of course I recognize my deputy director. Dr. Mrs. Joy. Obi, Joy, see, Obi, man, who do not like Mrs. Can't hear you, Mrs. Dr. Mrs. Uh -huh. Welcome. She has been very wonderful. She's a guidance counselor. So she brought in that art of guidance and counseling in Sendasna. So we keep working hand in hand to give the best. Well, I will always be grateful for today to every one of you, and I pray God to provide for those who have not done their own to do too. And uh, yes, thank you. Thank you. Can you my head, Jody? Ah, because calling I can work. Can you go here, Doctor J C Cheke? I am my head of department. I don't do adult education in the neighbor. I'll make a known because Kachuku goes on and now has Jesus. Give me a chance. I'm not sure. Thank you. You could go most on Agamata. Is that a good or a bad chance? Thank you. Please may we rise to appreciate the 97th inaugural lecturer of our great university, Professor Williams, Emeka Obiozo. I call on the Akabiko. Thank you. May we be seated? Thank you. And may I respectfully invite the chairman 
the Namda Zikiwe University Inaugural Lecture Committee, Professor Richard Owawe, ably represented today by our quintessential Professor Mike Ezemwa to please come forward to officially invite the Vice Chancellor to decorate the 97th inaugural lecturer, Professor Williams Obiaza, the chairman. Thank you very much. We call him my father, hmm? the university orator, and the dean of my faculty. Um, Mr. Vice Chancellor, before I invite you, permit me to once more appreciate this young man who has been very hard working by my immediate left side, or one but my immediate left side. For me, this is a very new innovation in this university. <laughs> 